Welcome everybody to our um, second session of today on June 9th, 2020. This is actually our fourth webinar in our webinar conference. Um, this webinar conference is being put on by the West Virginia Behavior Mental Health Technical Assistance Center. This uh, conference is in, um, in result of us having to cancel our annual conference, but we wanted to make sure that we were able to get content out and um, our presenters were so willing to um, switch to a different platform and be able to share their information with us. Uh, the West Virginia Behavior Mental Health Technical Assistance Center is a collaboration between the West Virginia Autism Training Center at Marshall University and the West Virginia Department of Education's Office of Special Education and Student Support. My name is Alicia Zeman and I am the PBIS coordinator for the TA Center and uh, we work um, a lot with school-wide PBIS, um, but we also have a very strong and a very amazing team that does early childhood PBIS. And this um, presentation today is really about um, the early childhood and the new fidelity measure of the teapot. And we're so thankful to have um, this team from Canals. Um, Canals County's preschool team is made up of a group of phenomenal women with many years of preschool, preschool special needs, and an administrative experience. Um, they're headed up by Ms. Carol Lane. She's the preschool director, 37 years of experience in preschool, 29 years in Kanawha County, eight years as an education manager, and seven years as a preschool director. We have several ladies presenting with us today, and I want to make sure that we get um, everybody's names out there and so we can um, thank them for the work that they're doing. Um, Diana Corker is a curriculum trainer with 40 years of experience in preschool, 32 years with Kanawha County, and 13 years as an education manager. Christina Anderson is a preschool coordinator, 17 years of experience in preschool and elementary, 15 years with Kanawha. Um, Alicia Davis is a preschool the special needs specialist, 15 years of experience in preschool and special needs in Kanawha County. Brenda Riffey, I hope I didn't mess that up. I'm so okay, right? sorry. <laughs> is an education manager, 30 years experience in preschool and elementary in uh, Kanawha County School. Angel Gursky is an education manager with 15 years of experience in Kanawha County um, as a preschool and elementary teacher and a principal. Jenny Schottaker is an education manager, 15 years experience in preschool and alternative schools with um, Kanawha County Schools. Sarah Mullins is an education manager, 14 years of experience in preschool special needs with Kanawha County Schools. And Erica Hanna is an education manager, eight years experience in preschool special needs in Kanawha County Schools. And we are so thankful to have this group of ladies to come and share their experience with, with us. Um, that's a that's a lot of experience ready to share with you um, their experiences and how they've um, been implementing Teapot in this last year in Kanawha. So ladies, we'll let you get started and thank you for spending the afternoon with us. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Christina Anderson. I'm the preschool coordinator for Kanawha County Schools. Um, today we have, it's just our county just sharing our experience um, using the Teapot and how we've connected it with um, our coaching. Um, we have 81 classrooms, so um, we're a pretty big county. Um, we have, um, you heard everybody that is on our team is here today with us, um, five ed managers, a curriculum, um, a preschool special needs um, specialists, and of course, um, Carol oversees us all, and we're a great team, and we work hard, and we're continuing to to learn new things. Um, and over the past year, um, we have connected with Dr. Carlson um, in completing this uh, ECPBIS coaching training. Um, the ed managers went last year, and then we had actually some of our teachers attend the three-day academy. So before um, we, we started all this in the past with our coaching, we would normally just use our, our data that we have from class and the ELS, um, observations, um, things like that, uh, as long with our, we had um, our self-assessment that we sent out to our teachers. And using that information, that's kind of how we come up with our focus for our coaching. Uh, and then we would work with individuals on what they would want to work on um, in the focus that the county, that our team has chosen. Um, this year, however, we took advantage of 
this teapot uh, tool and how we could use it with our coaching. So that's what we want to share with you today, some tips and some examples uh, of how we use this tool to help our coaching uh, with our preschool staff. So today we're going to briefly discuss how we organized and implemented the teapot, how we um, reached out to the teachers, how to get them involved and in wanting to be coached, how we communicated with them um, you, uh, with the teapot and then with the coaching part. Um, what we don't have a lot of data since we just started. We only got to complete one uh, teapot at the beginning of the year. Uh, we had planned the second part, but with the pandemic, that um, didn't happen. Um, so Diana will share how we plan to use that data. And then um, at the end, we really want to share how we use that information to guide our coaching. Um, and it, it's been a big change, and it's been really helpful this for this, we can actually look at, at a county what we want to focus on, and then we can use that tool and work with um, teachers individually. And using that tool, we can determine what things we want to focus on. Um, this has been a great year. It's been a lot of learning um, for our staff and our teachers, but we're very excited. Um, and I want my team to share um, their experiences with you. Um, you can send your questions at the end with the survey and we will get back to you. Um, so we hope that you um, enjoy this and uh, please send your questions. We're going to start off with um, first on the list is Ms. Erica. Hi, um, my name is Erica Hanna and I'm the um, preschool education manager for Kanawha County Schools. Um, each ma ed manager has 15 to 16 classrooms, um, but we only coach one to few classrooms. Um, we observed and conducted the teapot in October and November, and we made sure that we had them all completed and scanned in to Dr. Carlson by Thanksgiving break. Um, at the beginning of the school year, Jenny, Christina, and I reviewed the teapot in an all-staff training. At this training, we gave teachers a teapot manual to review and answered questions and gave examples right there. Um, we made sure to let them know that we were there for them, and we didn't want this to be one more thing that overwhelmed them. So we, we really just told them if they're following the preschool curriculum, um, they're already doing all of these things. So we just reassured them. Um, we planned a date with each of our teachers to visit their classrooms. Um, we emailed the interview question part of the teapot beforehand so that the teachers could answer them at their own, their own convenience. Um, when we came to the classroom, we stayed from the beginning of the day until lunch. And the hardest part, I think, for all of us was not interacting with the kids while we were in the classroom. You kind of had to find your own little spot and, you know, make your own little camp and try not to talk to them. Um, the under the notes section, um, I documented if staff, if the teacher and the ECAT were new, if they were long-term subs or veteran teachers. I also doc documented how many special needs students were in the classroom and how many students had significant speech delays. So when Dr. Carlson and her staff saw the teapots, they could get a little better understanding of the classroom. Um, when it came to scoring, um, I filled out all the information that I could beforehand before going into the classroom. Um, there was one part that all of us pretty much messed up on, but Dr. Carlson helped us. The summary, pro we did not fill out the summary profile correctly, which we all joke. We teach preschool because you only have to count to 10 um, because we couldn't get our numbers to add up. So when Dr. Carlson came and um, reviewed the teapot with us. She showed us how to fill that out correctly. I'm good, Christina. Okay. Next, Angel. Angel, we can't hear you. Can't hear you. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. I'm Angel Gursky, and I'm an education manager for Kanawha County Schools as well. 
my part of the um, presentation is on tips um, when um, doing the teapot with your teachers. Um, the first tip I had was to read this um, teaching pyramid observation tool teapot for preschool classrooms manual. Um, you read it before you go and um, highlight the areas that um, you're going to be observing in the classroom so that you know um, right away what you're seeing and, and what you're not seeing. Um, also become very familiar with the tool, which is a little pamphlet, um, the teapot tool. Um, select a time um, to do the teapot with each teacher, which um, we kind of touched on, um, and send them a copy of the tool. Um, send them or give them a copy of this and so they know what you're observing beforehand um, we sent the interview questions beforehand as well so we didn't have to interrupt their teaching to ask them the interview questions there's quite a few interview questions in the teapot and so um, we felt like it would be better to do beforehand when the teachers could spend their own time doing that Make sure when you do the teapot that you can observe at least two hours, which includes both teacher-directed activities such as circle time and small groups and child-directed activities such as free play and center time. Um, the observation should not include times such as meals, outdoor play, or other occasions when the entire class is engaged in another type of activity such as a music class. Um, Complete the information before the observation, such as the teacher's name, center, and class schedule. Um, you'll obtain their class schedule before the observation, and you have to fill that out um, in the booklet. Uh, so um, you can get that beforehand. Uh, a tip that I uh, found handy was to score the teapot and complete the graph on page 29 immediately after the observation. Um, if, if I got, um, if I had somewhere else to be and I couldn't do that right away, it seems like it wasn't as fresh in my mind. So I was, I feel like scoring it right after you do the observation is, is best. And then you set up a time with your teachers to go over the results and that's where you plan for coaching, which, um, somebody else is going to talk about later. Okay. Alicia. Hi, I'm Alicia Davis, and I'm the preschool special needs specialist for the county. And so last year, I was also the education managers, uh, manager rather for three classrooms. Um, so I'm just going to talk for a minute on how to use the teapot results and to give feedback to the preschool staff. So once you complete the teapot, you're going to want to touch base with the teacher right afterwards because more than likely they're going to be really eager to know how they did. Um, I know that mine were. I had um, two classrooms that both the teacher and the aide were new in both of the classrooms, so they were very eager to hear how they had done. So try to come up with the time beforehand that you can do that with teachers. So maybe during nap time, I would say lunchtime, but of course that time's not always necessarily quiet for a preschool classroom because they're busy, you know, helping the kids uh, feed themselves and open the items. Nap time may or may not be quiet, just depending on the classroom. So even if you could touch base, maybe like right after the kids leave, not for anything too long. Like I said, just to let them ask questions on um, how things went. I think that it's good to let to ask them questions. I kind of ask mine, well, how do you think you went? What areas do you think that you did well on? What areas do you think that you could improve on? Um, it's important to review the summary score graph, which is at the end with them. And so that kind of helps you guide your conversation with them. And then you can show them not specific items, but just overall how they did on the observation. Again, ask them how they felt that it went, how like those areas that they did really well on, because again, you don't want them to, it's not an evaluation. So you want to make them feel good about it and just let them know that you're there to help them. 
You could review the items that were not maybe marked on the teapot in the areas that you just missed or you didn't get to observe because it could be something that you know they've done in the classroom where you're familiar with the classroom, but maybe you didn't see it that day. So, of course, they can't get um, credit for something if you don't see it because it could be something that could be an easy fix. It could just be something that was a visual schedule. Maybe they had their rules up, but they didn't visually have their expectations up. So that could be something that you could work on right then for them to kind of correct. If there's any red flags that you may have seen, you may want to go ahead and discuss those with them just to kind of see if that's typical in the classroom. Maybe it was an off day. Uh, of course, if there weren't any, then that's fantastic. Once you follow up with them um, after the observation, you're also going to want to follow up with an email within a day. For mine, I um, also went ahead and, of course, cc their principal on that email. Again, it's really important to let the teacher and especially their administrator know that it is not an evaluation. And so one of my principals actually wanted to sit down with me and discuss how they did. And so, you know, with administrators, they, they were like, well, how was, how was the evaluation? So you kind of have to point it out. It's not an evaluation. It's an observation on how we can help them in areas that either they feel they need help in um, or we kind of see that they um, have, you know, some weaknesses and want to improve on. So, um, the coaching part, I guess that's all for mine because, again, this is just kind of a general overview of how to go over it. So then the ladies after me are going to go into greater detail on using that summary score graph at the end then to look at specific items to target for coaching. And I think it's Miss Jenny. Actually, it's Diana. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, hi, <clears throat> I'm Diana Corker. Um, I'm the curriculum trainer. I used to be an education manager, but at this time, I, uh, I collect all the data for our program and I try to come up with uh, some uh, information that helps our program and guide it toward um, staff development and other things. Uh, our program relies heavily on data to develop trainings for staff that potentially can help them improve their teaching strategies in the classroom, uh, such as classroom management, um, uh, child, uh, adult child interactions, et cetera. And the teapot, we hoped, could provide us uh, with data that can be used to, uh, for our coaching uh, and helping them with their weaknesses and their skill set toward behavior management type programs. And uh, so due to the lack of data that we had this school year, um, I'm not able to come up with comparison data points, but the education managers were able to take the data from their initial teapot that they did and produce their coaching plans. And that's what we, we really like. We like to see why we're doing what we're doing, and uh, we like to use that information uh, for things like training, uh, for things like small group, large group staff developments. Um, we, we initially uh, did an Eckers years ago and we used uh, the data to come up with purchases. So we're talking about monies for uh, inventory, anything that can help our teachers uh, produce best practices in their classrooms. So basically uh, any tool that you use can produce results for improvement in uh, teaching strategies, in uh, classroom uh, design and classroom management, behavior management. So we're hoping this tool will help us with the behavior management part of our program, uh, just due to the fact that with uh, all the things that are going on in the world, with children coming out of drug homes and abusive homes and, and the trauma that they experience, that we will be able to work with our staff uh, from the information that we glean from these, um, these observation tools uh, to better help them support the children and the families that they're working with. And that's basically what we do with our data. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Jenny? Okay, I'm unmuted now. Um, Christina has up there our um, coaching form, which she made um, based on forms that we have seen through the Office of Head Start and other trainings that we've been to, but this one works out really well for us because we sat down 
with the teachers based on the TPOT scores and come up with a goal that they want to work on based on their scores. Um, and we come up with steps with the teachers to attain the goal um, and resources that they might need. I know that a few of us made schedules. We made rules with the teacher. Um, one teacher that I worked with um, needed help with the schedule and, and I sent example schedules so she could um, tweak her schedule. Um, and another teacher needed to work on expectations and that was what that was where she scored low. Um, and then we came up with a timeline to do focus observations. I know with the teapot, um, it gave us more of a target area to work with our teachers. We have done coaching in the past and it was kind of based on, on some of the Eckers checklist and the class observation, but with the teapot, with how it's broken down, it gave us more of a focus to work on with the teachers. Um, and then we had observation dates um, there are three there, but the form that we use, we have it sh oh, sorry, shared on um, Google Docs and you can add if you need more dates. And then you go over and you type your, your notes out and then you sit down together and reflect on, on how they did. Um, I, I know I had to tally with one teacher how many times after we talked about her teapot, we tallied how many times she used the expectation chart in her class and she could really see where she had improved. Um, and this teacher in particular, I coached her and then she wanted her staff to use the same language as her. So we kind of, I coached her so she could coach them. So it worked out really well with that. Um, I had one teacher that um, she didn't, I know that is supposed to be a teacher that wants to be coached, but I had a teacher with lots of red flags and she was a veteran teacher. Um, so I sat down with her principal, like a couple other um, of the ed managers did and, and talked about, you know, some of her red flags and what I was seeing on other observation dates. And um, as a team with the principal, we worked together and she became more comfortable with being coached by me. Um, and, and I think it was successful too. So um, let's see, make sure I hit all my points. Yeah. Um, but I really, my favorite part was the observation, the focus observation, and then the reflection, how they thought that they did and how we worked together to, to show that growth as a teacher because it was so focused. Um, so. Thank you. All right, Brenda. Hi, I'm Brenda Reif. I'm also an education manager with Canal High Schools. Um, I'm going to share with you one way that I use the teapot in coaching. Um, I'm going to share with you my screen. And Alicia was talking a little bit earlier about how she was scoring the teapot. Um, and this is what it looks like at the very end when you go in and you get the information and you, you plug your numbers in and you score it. And it also gives us a little look at some... Um, strategies used if there were behavior challenging behaviors that occurred during your observation okay so you take all this information at the very end and you make this really neat uh, graph okay so it really gives you a beautiful visual of what the teacher's strengths and weaknesses are okay so i took this with my um, young teacher that i was coaching and the first thing i went over with her was were her strengths because she had a lot of beautiful, beautiful strengths. So we talked about in, in one of the main areas I was concerned about were some behavior issues. So I really focused on looking at, like, for instance, the transitions between the activities. So her transitions were beautiful. So the behaviors were not occurring then. She had beautiful, um, supportive conversations with children. The directions were beautiful. So we went over all of her strengths. Okay, and then another thing that we looked at again, did she have any red flags? And this teacher did not. So um, the next area we look at is where she needed some help for her coaching. So the lowest area were her teaching behavior expectations, okay, which was a really easy one to go in and fix. 
So this is what this looked like. We went to number seven in your booklet. Hey, Brenda, I don't think your, um, your Can you have sharing is still on the summary profile. Oh, no, you can't see? It didn't switch. Hmm. Well, she's, I'm not sure how to get that back up for you guys. Oh. It says that it's still sharing with me. I'm so sorry. Okay, well, let me. I think you need to just scroll down. Oh. Scroll down. We can't see the graph. We can only see the numbers. Hmm. Okay, I'm so sorry it's showing up on mine. Let me very, let me see if I can show you another way. I'm sorry. Um, the graph, so you all saw this part, right? I'm sorry that it's not showing up right. So at the next part, you do it, you just graph it. Can you guys see this okay now? Yes, not quite as good, but okay. And so it really gives you a beautiful picture of what um, your teacher's strengths and weaknesses are. Again, I said no red flags. So her lowest area was the teaching behavior expectations. So this was number seven, and we went back and we looked at what was number seven and what areas needed to be improved on. And those are the ones that I did put on. Um, Jenny talked to you about the coaching action plan, okay? So for instance, looking at this then on our graph, I came up with this goal that she would post the behavior expectations with visuals, be, review them with large and small groups, involve the children in critical thinking about posted behavior expectations and their importance in the classroom. So that gave us each area. So what we went in and did then, I um, with the help of another one of my ed manager had a beautiful um, posted classroom rules with visuals. So I went in there and um, made that for her. And then, so I worked with her going back and then coming back and saying if she saw the behavior, referring it back again to um, her visual with her rules listed, okay? So then once she completed all those, and then, then you can go back and look and say again, what is your next area that we need to work on? So that's one way I used um, the teapot with my coaching. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Sarah, can you uh, share your screen? You need to unmute. I'll try. Let me show you this first. Um, so with my teacher, she scored a no on the indicator um, SR9 which is um, that she only continues with a specific teacher-directed activity when the majority of children are actively engaged. Um, because when I observed her, um, she had two special needs children. One of them was rather more severe than the other. Um, and they were not actively engaged in her large group time. Um, they would try to leave the area. Um, they would cry. They wouldn't stay in their spot. Um, that's why she received a no on that, and she went on. Um, other things that she received a no on was under number four, promoting children's engagement. Um, ENG4, it says that the um, large group activities are structured so that children have opportunities to be actively engaged all the time, and that the teacher assists individual children who are exhibiting challenging behavior within an activity to become actively engaged. So at the time of this observation, I didn't observe any of those things. Then, um, okay, I'm going to try to share my screen. Um, when I went to speak with her about coaching, I chose to coach this teacher because it was her second year in the county, but this was her first year of having some significant special needs. So I saw that she was having some difficulty in that. So. When I went and did this coaching plan with her, um, she actually came up with the goal that she would like for her special needs kids to be more engaged at circle time. So we developed the goal that she would change her activities that she did at circle time so that they would be more engaged. And then we elaborated that that would look like they stayed in the area and they completed their 
task instead of trying to run away and instead of in, instead of crying. That's what that would look like. So when the thing, all right, let me try again. Okay. All right. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. Um, this was one of the things that I made for her and we made for them a circle time book. This was the cover of the book and the, I based it off of the things that she was doing in her circle time already because we wanted the special needs children to get instruction in the same skills and do the same kind of activities that their peers were doing. So for example, she did the weather. Um, so this would be a page in their book. These would be the weather pieces on one page um, and the classroom assistant would take the, the child um, to a table and do this with them, prompt them, look out the window, what's the weather? They would take the weather piece and put it here, a Velcro piece. Um, she would talk to them about the temperature, hot or cold, and they would move this little smiley up and down. And the teacher had a large frog that they would dress to do the weather in their circle time. And this, it was based off the book, Froggy Gets Dressed. So this, the special needs child in their book had a small frog and they would talk about what he should wear and they would take the Velcro piece and put it there. Um, you can see up here, some of the other pages that were in the book were an individual calendar. So they would count. Then there was a page right here where they would count and talk about the ABCs with the classroom assistant individually while the rest of the class was, I'm trying to navigate around this screen. The rest of the class was doing the same thing um, in the large group setting, but it was difficult for them to pay attention. There's some more examples of the pages that were in the book. And for the calendar, the same way they would count the day and then they would put that little smiley face on what day it was that day. There's the there's some the large page. Um, they would also I had her use initially with them a timer and the timer that I suggested was one that I actually saw Erica use in her classroom. She taught me about it. it's online stopwatch.com and they would put that timer on the iPad and set it there beside the child. And initially they started at two minutes. You know, you, you do this for two minutes and then they would let the child up. And then gradually um, when the child got used to the book um, and realized that they liked the activity, um, they would stay there longer and they eventually were able to stop using the timer. But in that way, um, using those um, activities and modifications, they were able to be engaged with the same skills that their peers were getting, but on an individual basis at her circle time. Thank you, Sarah. Let's see. Um, this concludes um, our presentation. I do want to say, I know a lot of people, even in the trainings um, we've been in, we talk a lot about um, getting teacher buy-in for coaching. We, um, like Jenny stated at the beginning of the school year, we, we, we meet with our staff and we go over um, our goals and everything. And we told them about our coaching plan um, and how we were going to implement the teapot and that eventually everybody's going to get a chance to be coached. Um, and it can, it can be uh, on a scale of how we do things. There's some teachers that need um, very specific to teachers that have been teaching that even know more than me and have better ideas um, that can still learn um, new ways to work with children. Uh, I think the state as a whole, we are we are seeing different challenging behaviors. Um, so we're constantly looking for ways to work uh, uh, with classroom management. Um, um, so as our time on, some of these that we coach, it may be for a month, uh, it could be for the year. Um, it, it, it just kind of depends on 
the, te the team, uh, the ed manager and the teacher of what goals they want to come up with. Um, but we've had pretty good response. Um, you still have some that are uh, a little wary about it, um, but uh, our teachers, they we sent uh, many of them to the ECPBIS and we have gotten nothing but uh, great responses. They love that and that has really helped um, them in their classrooms. Um, so I recommend uh, you looking into that. Um, I mean, we are continually still learning how to um, coach and uh, come up with new ideas and working in the classroom, but we hope that you've gotten um, something from our uh, webinar. And if you have any questions, um, Alicia will tell you how to um, uh, send those and we will respond and get back to you. Absolutely. Thank you so much, guys. Um, I wanted to share with you, I just threw out like three different links and I wanted to make sure that you saw them in the group chat. Um, I encourage you to go check out wvecpbis.org. Um, Dr. Carlson and her behavior support, support specialist, um, Jess George um, for the South and Sarah Smouth for the North have been working hard to update that. It has a lot of great information, a lot of great links for coaching and for the teapot. Um, I also added a link that is our technical assistance request link. Um, if you are interested in this or need to want more information or need some technical assistance, you could click on that, fill out that short little um, request for assistance. And yes, Dr. Carlson, I was going to um, ask that if you wanted to add anything, but I didn't want to put you on the spot. Real quick, before Dr. Carlson starts talking, that last link is a sign-in survey, survey link, and that's the link that's going to uh, give you attendance verification. And then um, also be a place where you can add questions um, that we can send to the canal team and they can get back to you. So Dr. Carlson, if you want to unmute, you can share with us um, anything you'd like to. You know, I can't keep my mouth shut. <laughs> um, I just want, I can't get off of here without saying two things. Well, more than two things, but I'll, I'll try to just say two things. Number one, I want to thank these ladies. Um, I asked them to do this back in January when we thought we would get to do it face to face. And not only did they say, okay, we'll do it. And then whenever all this madness hit, they said to Terrell and they said, okay, we'll do it this way. Um, and I think that gives you insight of who they are as professionals and people and the flexibility and the professionalism that they've exhibited. If you're just tuning into this and you've watched this, you can see um, why buy-in is probably high for them and then their staff because of who, what they're doing and their leadership from Carol. So I want to thank them for doing this and for um, continuing to say yes to this after we had to do it via Zoom. Um, and I'm looking at everybody's background. Some people are outside, some people are inside. Everybody's looking like they're having a good day. Um, but number two, I wanted to say, as we're figuring this out, you know, we, we as the TA Center, myself and Jess and Sarah, are trying to figure out how to support these women, um, meaning these coaches, wherever you are, whatever agency you're working with or, or county. But we can't do our jobs to our best if you don't have people like these women doing their jobs to their best who then in turn allow their teachers to do the best possible job they can do. And all of that does is feed down to these kids, which we all know, and it was mentioned here today, are at the highest need that we've seen probably in public education in our state in recent years, for sure. And we know the greatest, the most high, the highest density incident of um, opioid addiction are pre-K kids who are entering this fall. The data tells us those numbers are only increasing. Now, we hope that changes, and I think we're making steps to change it. But it is also, it is what it is, folks. And we have to we have to help these children and meet these families and kids where they are. And I think the best way we can do it, it's not perfect. We're still learning. But it's coaching. And my heart was just bursting. I was so happy and excited listening to you guys talk about all this that I had to just say, good on you. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my professional heart because you're allowing us to do our jobs better. And I, as a mama, I thank you because my son is in two and a half years going to be entering. And I hope he goes into a system that's got people who are a backbone saying, let's fix this. When, when I'm seeing circle time stuff, I mean, you can tell I'm excited. I can't help it. When I see it circle time stuff that says, let me help this kid with special needs be able to comment on the weather. 
I mean, I want to stand up and sing hallelujah. That's awesome. That, that, makes, that makes a difference more than just a small minute in that kid's day or that, what that does for that teacher. It's supporting real change, not just on social, emotional, but in teaching, teaching everything from whatever strategy and, and concept you're trying to do up to the big things that we want to hit, empathy, all of those things that we know are hard. So I will shut up. I hope everybody that tuned into this got uplifted as I did. And it's recorded, and I'm going to share it on our uh, Facebook page. So if they didn't, I'm going to make uh, make sure I preach that everybody come and watch this recording. So thank you, Alicia, for letting me interrupt. Thank you, ladies. Um, have a good summer, and um, I'm I'm hoping we get to work together face to face in the fall. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I did see one question from Linda C about if there's a comparable coaching program for elementary or in intermediate age classrooms. Uh, Linda C, I'm going to put my email in the um, in the chat box. If you will go ahead and send me that question, and we can talk more about how we can um, work on a coaching program for elementary and intermediate, and how can, we can meet your needs for that. Okay. Um, everybody, don't forget to go to that sign in survey link. Um, ladies, we appreciate your time and your experiences. And Amy Carlson, I'm so glad you talked. I love when you talk, <laughs> it makes my day. Um, thank you, and we will see you. We have um, more webinars on Thursday, one at 11 and one at one, and we will continue to have webinars um, for the rest of June. So, if you need more information about what those look like, go ahead and hit me up on the email that I'm going to put in the box, but I hope everybody has a great day. And